this guy Tang, <laughs> and I'm here with my model, my model, Christy, <laughs> and you guys remember her from the two Victoria's Secret ombre inspired mm -hmm. balayage ombre video, yes? I'm back. And how long has it been? Nine months, oh, right? Oh, nine months, ten months? Ten! Oh, wow. Ten months. A good take, chunk of time. Take a look at that. It still looks good, and this is how Christy normally wears her hair, right? Very beachy. Mm -hmm. So she basically lives on the beach, so her hair kind of looks like this. <laughs> Today, we're going to refresh it, and a lot of people have been emailing me and wondering how do you retouch a balayage ombre so that's what we're gonna do today and we're gonna make it fun we're gonna make it festive and we're having a semi clavage day today <laughs> as well <laughs> so stay tuned okay guys so when I open up Christy's hair take a look at the insides you can see where her natural regrowth is from the last 10 months so here's that kind of a line but it's still not that dramatic because we stay close within her base so here's that uh, base breaking that we did in the past that caused that golden tone in between and here's those balayage highlights that you see I could literally pick them out so what I'm gonna do today is basically blur this line in to her base color so we don't see that but even though she wears it down it almost ombres itself which is very nice so she could go almost probably a year she could probably even go another five months with this and it's okay because it ombres itself so see even when I sweep it back it looks fine no one knows the difference so but we are gonna pre-break that base so that way uh, we can create a blend more you could do whatever you want but that's how I'm gonna do it so it's gonna make it a lot easier Okay, mm -hmm. so as you guys know, Christy is a natural level 7, which is considered a dark blonde. Um, I chose to pre-base her first just because I want a brighter base to get the highlight to, to fuse in together. I don't want such a high contrast. Technically, I can pre-base her with this level 9, and then while this is processing, I can balayage the lightener directly over it so the color will mesh together and blend well without you doing a second step. But today, what I wanted to do is do it separately because so it's cleaner so for some people who are beginners it's easier so you guys can see it uh, so doing a separate stages but once you get a little bit more advanced then you can start doing two things at once what I love to do is you know uh, do the gray coverage if she had gray put the base down and then balayage directly over it and then it actually cuts the time in half so you don't have to do two separate things that you know in separate stages like one process rinse shampoo come back and do two separate things but um, I'm gonna let her base sit on first and we're gonna wash her out and then we're gonna do the balayage right over this sorry so I just got done lifting Christie's base as you can see now the color is extremely seamless no matter where I move it you can see that it just slowly fades into that color where before the line was a lot harsher but take a look at that so now this creates a great foundation for me to go in and stroke in the lightener so it'll just blur it in some more so we can connect these lighter ends to it as you can see how light the contrast is on the end so we're gonna blur that up so I have three scoops of my favorite powder lightener measuring at equal parts to three ounces of developer I'm gonna pour it in okay so now that I have three scoops and three ounces of the developer I want to do one-fourth an ounce of the Olaplex and what's cool about it it does have a measuring thing in this reservoir so I'm just gonna squeeze it up like this little mouthwash little thing that we love in those kids mouthwash and just about that much there you go and then now I'm gonna pour it in but first I want to stir this up first before I pour it in here okay? is the Olaplex see that I'm gonna pour it in boop yay it's in it's in so now let's just stir it in with the lightener see that and I do like it because it creates a nice consistency so it's easier to spread because we're all about spreading we're all about consistency and spreading the spreadability of the product the product okay so check that out so that's the consistency you're gonna get from it so see I like to use a whisk oh look at that it's all nice and pasty so that's our consistency with the Olaplex in it so there you have it. With the Olaplex, it's important to bump up the developer. So if I'm going to use a 30 volume on Christie's hair, I'm going to bump up the developer to 40 volume because it does soften the uh, power of it because it's actually protecting the hair. So if you want that lift that you would get with a 30 volume, bump it up to a 40. If you want to use 20 volume, you got to bump it up to a 30. If you're going to use 40, then 50. So always bump it up one volume higher so you can get the lift that you want. Trust me, it sounds scary at first because when I first used it, I go, what? I have to bump it up? And trust me, 
it, it's, it's not that scary because once you get used to it, you understand. So that's that's the secret behind the Olaplex. Don't be scared to bump it up to 40 because it's not uh, as you know powerful as you think when it does that because it actually protects your hair and you're going to get the lift that you want. So there you go. And there's the consistency. Okay. Look at that nice pasty consistency I get with it. Okay. So now we're going to get started on balayaging her hair. So when you guys balayage, I like to use a few different paddles. I like to use this big old flat paddle because you may need it. I'm not going to use it anytime till near the end. And I also get this wooden paddle because I get to stroke and lay the hair on it as I stroke. Um, I also use this kind of a brush, which is a slanted brush. So when you swipe, it blends better. Think about like when you, I don't know, like you draw your eyeliner on or the different type of makeup brushes you have to create more of a smoother stroke. You have to have different brushes when you paint hair so you can get more of a seamless stroke versus just using any brush. Otherwise, it'll get splotchy and patchy. So buying different, several different brushes for balayaging is very important because it's free hand painting. So let's get started with this, okay? So I have some lightener on my paddle here. Okay, so I just get the lightener from the paddle and less is more and I always start down the middle and pat it on gently. Just stroke it in and just work your way up. Less is more. Sometimes you want to get carried away with thick uh, pieces. Don't do that. You just want to slowly stroke it up because it's going to make more of an impact if you apply less product. Don't just slap it on there. See, and you slowly stroke stroke it up okay you take a large section here and make sure you don't overlap so when I go up I just kind of like gently pat it on light strokes just like that see you can see the minimal product I'm getting from the paddle okay and that's how you apply it and you don't ever want to overlap and on the other side I'm gonna do the same like that and there's a couple pre-lighted areas so don't overlap that, okay? And we do have the Olaplex in here, so even if I do a slight overlapping, I'm not too scared of any type of breakage because it's gonna provide that little bit of that insurance to protect the hair so I don't have to be scarred. I don't have to be scarred, okay? So it's all in how you stroke, guys. Don't go too hard. It's not about getting it all the way in there. It's about letting the product sit on the surface because I feel like too many people just push and push and push. So you can see your ends are already pre-lightened. So we only want to just pat it on gently through there. Okay, just a gentle stroke. Just gentle. Just barely touch those ends and just let them sit just like that. As you can see her ends are very long. So you can see how I don't overlap. So now I'm going to go over to the next section. And you do want to leave some dimension, so a little bit of depth here and there, make it a little bit more natural looking and not too um, dippy. Because we're not creating an ombre look, we're creating a balayage sun kiss look. Okay, so we want to mimic what her hair will look like when she's a little girl. Because when Christy's a little girl, she was a lot blonder, right, Christy? Absolutely. She was really blonde when she was young. So um, that's the whole point of these uh, balayage ombre looks is that it's a look that is timeless because uh, nature would never go out of style. It's like telling a, a girl she's out of style, like a little girl that has natural color. It's mimicking what nature would do. See that? It's all in the stroke. Just like that. Getting it right down to the very ends. See? Look how natural and fluid the lightener is going. And if you feel like you got a little too much clumping right there, just get that and just stroke it down. Just like that. See that? And just swipe it. And because once the product dries out, you don't have to worry about it creating patches. Just like that. Just barely tap it in. Just blur any hard lines in. Okay, hold your ends because you need that pressure and just stroke that lightener through right there like so and barely stroke it down right through there and there you have it and we're ready to move up 
Okay, as you can see, I finished this side already. There is no right and there is no wrong. If you feel safer using foils, that's fine. If you could create the end result using foils, and sometimes I do, because sometimes I need more control or color correction type of work, you need to use foils, and that's okay. I think a lot of the world is so consumed with the word balayage, and they feel like they have to balayage. No, you do not have to balayage. But I am doing that balayage method today, but if someone, you know, if a client comes into you and say, I want the balayage, a lot of times our clients don't know. They just think about the look, not the technique. They don't think, oh, I, you know, they bring in a picture of a balayage look. But you can still create that with foils. So that's okay. If you feel safer doing it that way, do it that way. So it's more about the result, not the technique, you know. You don't go into your surgeon or whoever and say, here, I want this type of incision or I want, you know, don't use that type of uh, scalpel on me or whatever. You know, it's more the end result that matters, you know what I'm talking about? So I don't even know why I use that as an example. But I'm trying to explain to you guys that it's not the technique, it's more of the end result that you give your client that matters. Right, Christy? Absolutely. And Christy, I have used foils on you before, right? You have, yes. So, and they're all different types of looks and different types of techniques. So, if you feel like using foils, do it. So, but look at this pattern I'm creating. It takes a little bit of patience. So, sometimes I feel like I can move faster with foils, you know? It's more of the stroke, and I really take my time. As you can see, I'm being very patient. I'm just moving up, stroking. And there you have it. Christy is single after three years of being in a relationship. Freedom! Freedom for her! So no more boyfriend. She's single, so we're talking about having the triple B. Brighter? blonder and better <laughs> so now that she's single she's gonna show off her new blonde hair so this is where the paddle comes in guys see that the paddle just you can pat the lightener onto the 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 hair just gently like that so you could saturate and penetrate the hair thoroughly and we're all about deep penetration because Chrissy is single and she needs to be deeply penetrated right now so you could go through the ends like so, just some parts, just stroking it through. And we all know about stroking, right? <laughs> We're all about stroking it through. <laughs> so easy as that. You can see the placement as I go around. You can see how the color is placing in. It's very shadowy, very beautiful, easy to do. And if you guys want to use foils, that is fine. I use foils too. If it's easier for you to use foils to place it in, you know, I could, I could isolate the sections better with foils, but there's something about freehand painting you know you, you have to really master this and kind of understand where it flows uh it's like how do i say it's like you know when you're doing makeup and you're brushing it blending the eyeshadow together it's the same concept just it's all about blending as you can see here stroking that lightener through so as i move up here she analyzed she has a lot of blonde here do i need to stroke it all the way down no a lot of times you just have to just kind of almost creating a retouch blurring it into the existing highlight that's already down there. I feel like when we're doing retouches with um, balayage technique, we don't know where to like stop and end and begin sometimes. Like, okay, do I stroke it all the way down? I don't like to overlap too much because I don't want to create damage. So you only want to connect and you don't have to bring it all the way up to the root. I feel like a lot of times we get too much striping effect when we get too close to the root. So you don't want to do that. You want to use minimal, minimal product, okay? And you know, one of the things with Chrissy being single is that, what did you say, Chrissy? You said that you feel free, right? Yeah, you don't <laughs> have to answer to anybody. I feel like, you know, with a lot of girls, they feel like they need to have, you know, blonde hair to attract guys or a new look to attract new guys. That's not what it's about. It's about mm -hmm. getting a new look to feel good about yourself. To feel confident when you get out there, whether it's your career, your job, just whatever it is that you're doing, having a new fresh look makes you feel more powerful, more confident in everything that you do. It's not necessarily to attract men. And that's not the case here. With Chrissy, she's single and she just wants a fresh new look, right? Yeah, and then the inside radiates out. Exactly. So as you can see that, I'm just blending it into the existing. And sometimes if you want to feather it in and use like a weaker lightener, you could. Uh, on the ends, just to brighten it up a little bit. Okay, so like, let's say you want to feather some in. You could just kind of like create a little brightening effect just by stroking 
stroking it through just ever so slightly like that just so it'll brighten up but it's not about over saturating it just barely tapping it through just like that and it'll brighten up some of those yellowy pieces right down there through the ends just like that just tap 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 Can you see that and that's all you do and you just lay the, lay the hair down from there on there just like that make sure there's no splotches just stroke 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 and there you have it so what's cool is that because I did mix the Olaplex into the product what I like is that I don't ever have to worry about over lifting when you use bleach by itself sometimes it can be very scary because you're like oh my gosh the hair is going to turn to gummy white and it's going to melt off but because I use Olaplex in there what I feel when I use it is that it never ever ever overlift to that white I always give you the right underlying pigment when I say underlying pigment, it's almost like the inside of a banana. It's a nice pale yellow or even a yellow. So depending on which, uh, how you mix it with the developer. Uh, you never ever want to overlift the hair because that's when it starts to melt off. So that's when, um, when I have a client that comes in and I know they're kind of compromised, their hair is compromised, I mix the Olaplex in there for reassurance that I'm going to be safe. And it is a luxury product that you add in into your service so I think that's really cool and as you can see she has pre-lightened ends so that's why I did mix Olaplex in there because I don't want to cause breakage if I do overlap slightly okay so as you can see this is the finished product behind Christie's head on how I place the movement and the stroke of the balayage technique as you can see it's very blended and shattered there's going to be no lines when you see this done. It's going to be so amazing. And I can put any toner I want after it to make it blend in. I'm going to move her so you can see how well this is blended here. Okay. And that's my technique on how I do it. And I'll show you how I get up to the top. Okay. As I lift this section out on Chrissy's hair, I can see where her highlight was. I just want to connect that in. So I gently stroke the lightener going up slowly like that just tap 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 and stroke 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 less product is more and just swipe it in so you can connect that in see that you want to kind of blur that in you don't want to overlap too much because you don't want it to over bleach or cause damage but you're blurring that in that's how you do a, a, a retouch on these balayage technique if you get a little bit there just kind of like dry it out and it won't work anymore see that so you don't have to worry about if you accidentally get on other parts, just use your finger and just wipe it off and you're good to go. Just like that. There you have it, because you don't want to overlap this. Now if you see slightly yellow pieces here, you could tap it on gently. Because there is Olaplex in it, you are pretty much safe, but just stroke, 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 stroke. See that? It's all about the gentle tapping, just to erase. Now you could change your formula down here if you want, but just tap the surface. Don't over penetrate that and stroke that through. Like that. Because less is more. There you go. See that? And then you're done with that section. So here's the final product. The final product after I finish um, doing her hair so it's saran wrap because I want to keep it moist because otherwise the product will dry out and that's not cool because when it dry out it's not working anymore so we're gonna sit here and process for at least 30 minutes and I'm gonna eyeball her to see where she's at when I lift up some of the strands up here so I just pulled the saran wrap off of Christy so you can see exactly the placement of everything it's ready to be rinsed out now Let's take a look at that that's pretty cool huh we're so excited are you excited? Alright yes. guys, yes. so I'm toning Christy's hair here at the shampoo bowl uh, while it's damp. Just trying to apply as quick as I can, try and get in there. I'm making sure I'm not missing any spots in the inside. So I'm hitting the, the insides first because I want to get them because we always tend to miss those insides. So I'm an analyzing it, analyzing how her color is processing, but it's blending so well already. But I just want to make sure that the tone is nice and warm. So I'm getting it right on there. It's looking so beautiful. Oh my gosh. And there you go. And then I'm going to let this process for probably about 10 minutes. 
So I just got done putting the toner on Chrissy's hair wet. I'm using a natural sandy color, very neutral, not too ashy, not too pearly, because we want her to look gray, white, green, all that stuff. So I just want to make sure it's balanced, it looks warm, because she's a beach girl, yes? Mm. Are you beachy? Very much so. So after we rinse this out, I am going to put the Olaplex number two on there. The number two Olaplex. So that way we seal everything in and make sure everything is finalized and done. So that way her hair is healthy. Right? You want healthy uh, hair? Yeah. Healthy! Healthy. <laughs> so you, you know what I'm really excited about? Her hair is damp and I'm literally brushing through it. And you guys saw that I overlapped it with the Olaplex with the lightener. Her ends were already light, but there is no breakage. See in my brush? That's really, really cool. It's not falling out. It's not falling out. Yes. And the cool thing, the one thing I do like about when I balayage is that, you know, versus foils, is sometimes we do back combing and do all that mess and it gets caught and stuck. In this situation, we can just brush it out easily and her hair is already done. No breakage. Boom, done. Here is the final impact of Christy Rose's balayage hair painted ombre, whatever you want to call it, hair paint, balayage. This video is the foundation and the fundamentals of what got me through when I start learning how to balayage. It can be challenging, it's very difficult because you don't know where to start or stop. So in this video, I hope you guys got what you wanted and it answers all your questions regarding balayage because I feel like, you know, it's, it's very difficult. I had to like go through so many clients before I figure it out. So in this video, I want to give you guys a lot of the secrets and tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and hair painting. So give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Vine, Snapchat, all that stuff. And let me know, leave some comments below on what you guys like to see next. I can probably show you even more advanced techniques on hair painting balayage style. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you.